One of the signs of a great man is how he treats his wife. The Bible tells us men to love their wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Ephesians 5.25 George Washington loved his wife faithfully all of his life. He was married to Martha Dandridge Curtis. Her first husband died when she was only 26 years old. The widow Curtis was wed to George Washington two years later in 1759. Washington was 27 years old at the time. They moved into Washington's home at Mount Vernon, Virginia on the Potomac River. There Martha raised her son and daughter from her former husband, Daniel Curtis. George and Martha never had their own children, but Washington loved his stepchildren, Jackie and Patsy, deeply, and both were good parents. After Washington took command of the American forces during the Revolutionary War in 1775, Martha spent every winter at her husband's headquarters. Her calm, motherly presence was welcomed by the weary soldiers, and she seemed an ideal wife for a great leader. She would often be seen bringing the sick and wounded soldiers whatever food she could gather, <laughs> saying a kind word here and there, helping the sick in hospitals and giving encouraging words to her sorrowful husband, George Washington. After the Revolutionary War, Washington got to do what he wanted to do most, retire and be a plantation owner, raise livestock, plant gardens, and ride horseback in the countryside, perhaps go on a fox and hound hunt. But his stay at Mount Vernon lasted only five years because in 1789, he was asked to become the president to a new republic, the United States. So off George and Martha went to New York City, the first United States capital. Martha was a great party hostess to huge receptions, but Martha was always down to earth, a very domestic woman, and high society didn't change her very much. Finally, after Washington's second term in office as president seven years later, he and Martha got to go home to their beloved Mount Vernon estate. Three years later, Washington was riding his horseback in the countryside. A storm came up, and by the time he got his horse into the barn and unsaddled it, he was soaked to the bone. He made the mistake of eating his evening meal in wet clothes, and during the night, he woke up with a terrible sore throat. This developed into pneumonia, and within days, it took his life. He died in peace, feeling confident that Jesus would receive him into the eternal resting home. It says in Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 and 15 in part, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and books were opened, and another book was opened, which was the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things that were written in the books according to their works. And whoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. It says that both small and great were judged. I believe the great George Washington himself will stand alongside the small, those Christians like ourselves who never made the history books here on earth, but praise be to Jesus, we make our names in the great history book in heaven, the book of life. Is your name written in that book? It can be by trusting your very soul to Jesus. Surrender your life to him. Live for him. And all that you do and say here on earth, do for the glory of Jesus Christ.